It was a gruelling six-week campaign that saw battles on national security, borders, the cost of living and the climate change crisis. Polls showed a tight race, but voters didn't have to wait long for the results. They made Anthony Albanese only the fourth Labour Party leader to win from the opposition since World War II. And I say to my fellow Australians, thank you for this extraordinary honour. Tonight, the Australian people have voted for change. I am humbled by this victory, and I'm honoured to be given the opportunity to serve as the 31st Prime Minister of Australia. The love of my life. Just a few hours after polls closed, Prime Minister Scott Morrison stood alongside his family and conceded defeat. He also offered his resignation as leader of the Liberal Party. It's a difficult night for Liberals and Nationals around the country, as nights like this always are. They are humbling, but so is victory. Victory is also humbling and always should be. Tonight, I've spoken to the Leader of the Opposition and the incoming Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, and I've congratulated him on his election victory this evening. Australians have endured fires, droughts and floods over the past few years, and it appears the ruling coalition's lack of empathy, particularly from Morrison, prompted many voters to turn their backs on him and put a priority on climate concerns. Albanese says he'll make Australia what he calls a renewable energy superpower. Labor has also promised to address the cost of living. It says it will invest $10 billion in housing. It's promised cheaper childcare, lower medical costs and a higher minimum wage. But the big questions, once the dust has settled, is how will its lawmakers pay for it? Anthony Albanese will be the first non-Anglo leader and the sixth Prime Minister Australia has had in nine years. But the real winners in the 2022 election are the Greens and Independent candidates who have taken seats from the two main parties previously considered as safe. Annette Lee, TRT World News, Sydney.